Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of In the Pit with Lobo Tigre. Our victim of the day is Peter Bell. He's CEO of Northwest Copper. If you've never heard of Northwest Copper, that's because it's the result of a merger between Sun Metals and Serengeti resources. So it's sort of new by name, but a story that's been around for a while and now it's better together, I understand. So, uh, Peter, I'm going to ask you to tell us, a, tell us your story, and I've got some questions, but I need to remind the audience that if you find value in what you see here today, please do subscribe. It helps us bring you valuable content free of charge. And by the way, if you miss any of these things, we put out a free, no spam, I promise, uh, weekly newsletter. You can sign up for it at independentspeculator.com. So that said, Peter, welcome to the show, and why don't you tell us what you're working on, and then I've got some questions. Of course. So thank you, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so I'm the, the CEO, president and CEO of Northwest Copper. I've actually only been in the job since the beginning of March. So I came in on the merger, um, and uh, but I've uh, known and followed Marco Day and the group for, for a long time. So, um, you know, just a very short bio on me. Um, you know, I'm a geologist. I spent about 16 years as a geo, including 13 with Newmont Mining. Um, and then spent 10 years on the buy side. I was an analyst and then uh, uh, co-managed a mining-focused hedge fund based in London in the UK at a place called Polygon. Um, and then three years in investment banking at National Bank in Toronto, mining investment banking, um, and, then, and then joined Northwest Copper. So I've known Mark since the early part of my um, buy side days. And, uh, you know, so... As I said, I, I joined in early March, and Mark and I started talking about it kind of in early January. And I what what brought me into the company, and then, and then I'll get to you know what we're trying to do here, um, was a combination of things. First, obviously, Mark has a great track record and has done a bunch of different interesting things with various companies in various scenarios in different parts of the world. Um, the second one, so being backed by somebody like that is is really helpful, especially as a first time CEO. So, you know, the, the, and the second part is um, that, uh, you know, from banking and, and also from my buy side days, uh, there's perpetually a shortage of copper development stories. And, you know, copper can be a, is a big capital kind of game. And so, you know, most of the, most of the projects, you know, it's, it's harder to have a junior copper company than it is a junior gold company, particularly putting it into production. So that scarcity factor made this uh, company attractive and interesting just because the pure shortage of them. Um, the third part, and probably for me, one of the more, more important parts was that, um, and I know, uh, I think we're going to get to this in terms of, you know, I'm thinking about, um, uh, the merger, the, the, um, the combination of the two projects and the grade that came from the Stardust project and indeed the, the higher grade part of Quinica. Um, provides the ability to have a project that we can scale and, and build ourselves. So this is a, a copper development story where uh, we can fund it, put it into production, particularly in a group that's that's done this before, um, and not be in a position where we have a giant deposit, but the capital, the initial capital is way too big for our market cap and we can't advance it. So we just have to wait around to be bought. I, did, I didn't want to run a company like that. I mean, it'd be great if you get bought right away, but you know, it could be a lot of years waiting for that um, take up. So I didn't want that. So, so the the grade and the scalability of this were very attractive to me. And then, just in terms of you know, kind of global political risk, um, you know, I've I've worked all over the world and traveled all over the world looking at various mining projects, and to be able to do something um, right in British Columbia, you know, in a, in a great jurisdiction in Canada, um, was also really really interesting. So. In terms of what we're trying to do at the company, we are we're taking the Sun Metals flagship project Stardust, and which is immediately adjacent. It's within seven kilometers of Serengeti's flagship project, um, Quinica, and we're putting together a combined operating plan for those two deposits. So we're basically using Stardust as a sweetener. And we're kind of using Quinica to provide scale. The scale provides obviously more material production than we would get out of the, of the standalone project, but it also provides some advantages on the cost side. For example, you know, by running a bigger mill, our process costs are lower, um, so we can potentially lower our cutoff grade or increase our margins. Um, so, so that combination of the scale and the the grade, you know, makes sense. It's 
um, you know, it's not common in mining, particularly in gold mining, but also uh, to some degree in copper mining, to actually have really realizable synergies between projects. You know, it's it's more like people just want to be big to be bigger. In this case, I think actually the two projects actually do belong well together and, and make sense together. So I like the combination of the two. It provides a pretty material, um, theoretically, you know, we haven't done the PEA yet, but, you know, kind of back of the envelope looks like pretty material um, production from the two deposits over, you know, some mine life that, you know, we need to work on expanding. But the near term uh, kind of cash flow and the and the um, and the capital cost, the kind of manageable capital cost, I think make this a, a pretty unique and, and attractive project, particularly when it's in a stable jurisdiction. So we're working on advancing that. We're going to have a new resource for Stardust coming out. Um, we've put out Metallurgy for Stardust, which was um, very favorable, um, mid ninety kind of uh, recoveries, which yeah, is a reflection that. of that high grade. Um, and then um, uh, we have a pipeline, and the pipeline consists of um, uh, drilling East Niv, which is our, our kind of discovery project, brand new uh, outcropping copper gold porphyry mineralization with a great geophysical signature, uh, never been drilled, not very far from Kames. And then Lorraine, which is kind of pro potentially trucking distance from Quinica Stardust, um, an old tech project that's been worked for a long time and has some pretty good high grade porphyry copper gold non-compliant resources and and we want to try and turn it into something that we could add to that Quinica Stardust um, uh, combination project. So so that's kind of the story. We're we're cashed up. We're a bit under 20 million bucks uh, in cash and uh, and we're looking forward to um, getting drilling, which we'll be doing um, this month. Okay, well that's a, an excellent summary. It begins to address some of my questions. <laughs> I guess if you were a buy side analyst, you probably can predict most of what I would ask because that's what I'm doing here. I'm representing people who yeah. might be a shareholder. I'm not a shareholder. It's your job to convince me and uh, those behind me to uh, buy your stock. You um, but, but before we get to what you're doing now, I want to go back to the merger for a moment. And it, yeah. I, I remember seeing that and honestly, I didn't like the deal. Not at the time um, I had I had been writing about Sun, not not as a shareholder, but it was the company under coverage in our My Take service. And so when the merger came out, I looked at that and I thought, well, you know, Quanica has a much lower grade resource. Why is this good for Sun shareholders? And you yourself have just said that the Stardust deposit is a sweetener. Well, yep. if, if the Stardust deposit is the sweet spot, you know, why do they need the sour spot, <laughs> sorry, of the neighbor next to... I, Talk me through. I get economies of scale, but you know, in copper space, actually, a small buildable mine is is a sweet spot. So, why was this good for Sun shareholders? Yeah, it's it's a great question, and um, the there are a couple of things that I, that you know kind of need to be identified in order to answer it properly. So, the the first one is that if you look at the grade, if you actually look at Quinica, so Quinica as a standalone project um, is kind of like a lot of, if you look at the average grade of Quinica, um, you know, it's a little over probably 0.4 copper equivalent in kind of all categories, a few hundred million tons of material. So pretty typical British Columbia porphyry copper gold, right? Not very, not very exciting grade, kind of moderate, but interesting tonnage and probably pretty clean metallurgy. So very good from that point of view in terms of producing decent cons. But the thing that's interesting about Quinica, which is sets it apart a little bit, is you know a lot of a lot of copper gold porphyries have a high grade core. You know, and you think about some of these these projects where they're kind of intact, and the deep high grade part of the deposit sits down at depth. So either you go in and block cave it, which takes a lot of capital and a lot of time to get to, or you mine an open pit, but you mine a few years of lower grade. In fact, sometimes a lot of years of lower grade before you get to that. So as a result. You know, copper mines tend to have long mine lives and very weak IRRs and very weak near-term cash flow. If you look at the cross sections in, in of Quinica, and you can see it in the deck on our website, um, you will see that the high grade is actually close to the surface. So the high grade comes up into uh, a theoretic kind of hypothetical pit that Serengeti did in their in their PEA, and you can see that the highest grade copper is essentially subcropping in the first phase of open pit mining. And then if you look, you'll see that it hugs an unconformity. Essentially, the deposit appears to be tilted 
and eroded such that the high grade part is actually exposed in subcrop and under the unconformity. So it's, it's near, it's in the early part of the mine life. So because of that, you can take the high grade from, from Stardust, which you correctly point out is the sweet spot, and you can take the sweet part of Quinica, which is not only closer to the surface than in a typical porphyry copper gold deposit, but also is very discreet from it. It's not broken up into little bits. It's all in one spot where it can be mined in a, in a more efficient way and brought into the mine plan. So what we can do is we can take the sweet from Quinica and leave the sour behind. So while the grade of Quinica, the high grade part of Quinica is not as high as Stardust, you're right. Stardust is a pretty unique, special deposit that is, is atypical. The, the grade distribution and the geometry of Quinica and its proximity, obviously, to Stardust too, are quite different from just your standard run-of-the-mill porphyry copper gold. So I think just from that point of view, from an operational point of view, if you do a if you do a back of the envelope calculation on this thing, you'll see you can get you can get good looking production a good looking production profile, um, you know, out of the combination of the two that has very good near term cash flow numbers. And again, so, this, these are so back just, the just to be clear, to Peter, you would actually be willing to sterilize the lower grade around it. You just take the high um, grade and leave the rest. An another great question. Um, it doesn't necessarily stare. I mean, obviously there's a trade off between how big you make the plant, how big your capital number is, how much you leave behind, how, what's your ability to go in and get that upside because the, the upside optionality provides, you know, a, makes you a better takeout target. So you have to be careful in terms of doing that. We don't want to do a small project that stays small, but we're trying to, you know, we're trying to balance a few different things. We are trying to balance a capital number that we think is manageable so we can you know credibly tell the market that we can finance and build this thing we don't want it to be you know a billion dollars or, or something like that we also um, want to try and retain as much of that optionality as possible because you point out we don't want to sterilize it because someone could in, come in and want to build a bigger project um, and at the same time we want to have good margins and you know good cash flow numbers and we want to you know be able to attract you know potentially debt and project debt and whatever so there are a lot of moving parts in this, and you know that is is kind of what we'll be looking at when we when we do our PEA in the early part of 2022. So, but you know, to me, the the grade provides a lot of flexibility, and and the grade on both sides provide the, the flexibility and opportunity to scale a project that again achieves that goal of being something we can do ourselves. All right. So I, actually, I do remember seeing that section on the presentation, um, and I remember. <laughs> Help me with this. I remember seeing it. It's kind of this narrow, almost pyramid at the top, which yep. is at open pit depth, and then yep. it blossoms out. And I had two questions about that. There's some higher grade in that blossom out, and I wonder if there's a, yep. a, a, an underground mining scenario maybe later on. Uh, but then yep. back at the top, there you're saying open pit, but that's sort of the opposite shape from what you want for a pit. It's it's anti pit shape. Like you're gonna you're gonna take a lot of material from the sides to get that narrow bit at the top, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's actually it's actually sub, I would I would characterize it as vertical and it it curves off in one direction. It's 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 more like a like a crescent than like a um, uh, than a pyramid. And um, so, but you're right. So if you look at that pit, you know, anytime you have sub vertical high grade, uh, you're going to have a pit. If you just try and build you know the ultimate pit out of that, you're always going to get high strip. Like that, that's just, you know, the higher the grade, the, the more the pit's going to pull deep and, and you know, make a, 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 a deposit that requires a lot of stripping. We need to figure out what, I mean, what would be fantastic is if we could actually do an all underground mine. I'm not sure that trade-off is going to work and that's going to be our best option, but it would be great from a permitting point of view, just sure. from a, you know, all kinds of, even from a current shareholder point of view, you know, people like small footprints for projects, people like, so... You know, that would be uh, like a real stretch goal for us, you know, to try and make an all. I, I wouldn't want to promise we're going to do that or we're going to put that forward. But that's something we'd definitely study as a scenario, because I think an all underground mine would be a would be a great option. But, you know, your your comment is is correct. And, you know, we need to figure out what the right trade off between the depth of that pit and the start of the underground is and so on and, and where that and that that's part of the PEA. OK. All right. And. I, I, so I guess the, the main answer to the strip ratio question, though, is that that high grade at Quanica is concentrated in a discrete body, and, it, and so you have no problems telling waste from ore, and you can just 
you know, you strip the stripping and there's no confusion about that and then you, you take what's left. Correct. All right. Um, okay, and, and I, I get the economies of scale, I get the combining the project, and I, and I absolutely get that usually, you know, Great Big Copper is, is big company hunting grounds. It's not for yep. juniors. It's not like gold where there's such concentrated value that a junior can manage. I get that. Um, but I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, help, help me with the, let's say, I don't want to put you on the spot here. I know that you're working on a resource, but I looked at the most recent uh, drill results from um, Stardust, and yeah, there were some really nice high-grade intersections, but then there was some low-grade mixed in, and then some were thick and some were thin. It seemed like a great deal of variability there. So, um, you know, <laughs> again, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but is there yeah. a, a corporate goal for what that's going to add to the resource, or help us understand what is being added or what has been added with the drilling, and then we'll go to what we do next this year. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, what we've been telling people is, um, you know, four to five million tons of, you know, two to three percent copper equivalent kind of depends on how it turns out. And there's a trade off between the cutoff grade, obviously, and the and the um, and the, the amount of material in the grade and so on. So there's there's a mix there. And, um, you know, the what I what just to address your question on the continuity, I'll kind of break up your questions a little bit. Um, if you, if you look at the deposit, there's a great deal, as you would expect, of structural control in that thing. And there's a great deal of, of thickening of the, of the main part of the zone. So if you think about that, that initial hole that Sun Metals drilled, which was 100 meters of 5.3% copper equivalent, incredible hole, um, that is in a very thickened part of the, of the deposit. And there's a, a, there's a continuous plunging high grade shoot that's thickened that forms the core of the deposit. And that is, has geometry and thickness that, you know, makes it pretty suitable. Like it's, it's very suitable for underground mining. Very, it, it's not, we're not talking about little pockets of mineralization where you have to do a lot of development in between and spend a lot of money on development capex to get to those, or that they're so thin that, you know, you take a lot of dilution and so on. This is a very compact, steep plunging, uh, uh, deposit with most of the mineralization uh, that's, you know, the really good mineralization in one particular shoot. So, you know, it, it's actually pretty well set up for, um, you know, kind of typical, like the kind of mining you might do in a, in a VMS deposit, you know, with sort of big scale, bigger scale than a gold mine, bigger scale kind of long hole uh, stoping. So it's, you know, I, 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 I'm not, while it's true that the, the drilling here has been tricky in the sense that they're trying to hit a narrow, steep plunging zone with holes from the surface, you know, that, that's not a straightforward exercise all the time. If you look at the results, you can see that actually it, it's, it's pretty coherent and the continuity is quite good. Yeah, I, I really miss uh, corebox.net where people could put their drill holes yeah, yeah, and you I could rotate that, that. It was available for the, we, the, the, the mere uh, lay audience out here. Um, <laughs> But it would be interesting to see the 3D model on that. Uh, okay, yeah. so, so it's not pinching and swelling. It's just some areas you, you need. I, I'm going to trust you to, to you know, be straight. Some areas it's there, it's consistent, you've got it. And then what, some of the areas, some of the holes were step out holes and they didn't hit as well? Or, or what made that well, variability um, happen? I, you know, uh, it's, it's a completely fair statement to say that, you know, after drilling 100 meters of 5.3%, the company never drilled another hole as good as that. So, you know, the other holes are more like 30, 40 meters of, of thickness of, you know, grades that in some cases are a bit higher, but, but in some cases a bit lower too. Um, so, you know, the, I think that they, you know, and I, I wasn't there when Sun Metals was doing their drilling, but if I look at the results, you know, it looks to me like their hit ratio was actually pretty good. They never duplicated, you know, it'd be great to drill, you know, 30 intercepts of 100 meters of 5.3 i mean that would be a, a quite a different style yeah, of deposit it, it, but, it, uh, but i don't i don't not, not to know, put you I on the spot I... peter but it was quite a bit more variable than that like we've got i'm looking at the last one that i see now from december yeah. and we've got 7.3 meters of 1.1 we got 4.5 meters of 5.58 percent copper we've got 21 meters of 0.45 i mean it's yeah. it like a different deposit or something um but if you look at the average, I mean, you still have 40 meters of 1.7, 44 of 1.6. So yeah. 
I, I don't need the whole thing to be 5% copper. But, no, no, of course But not. Uh, and, inconsistency but if, always but makes me nervous. It, it, uh, I'm not... The, the, the grade is good here, and the continuity, a long plunge, is, is quite good. I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time, as, as, you know, as I said, we're working on our resource, so I've spent a lot of time looking at the data in 3D, and you know, the, the holes connect up pretty well. But your question actually feeds back to your first question which was you wanted to know, you know, why the merger made sense. And, and part of the reason is that, you know, when you're trying to drill a, a steep plunging narrow deposit from surface um, like this, you're going to hit some holes and you're going to miss some. You know, that, that's, that's the way these kind of deposits work. There is some variability that is, is hard to, you know, you might be able to really have it nailed down from underground, but when you're doing it from surface, it costs a lot of money to get those holes in the ground. And, you know, the market was not reacting to the results that they had. And so, you know, the, the as you, you have a share price that, you know, is, is staying flat, let's say, at best, and a drilling cost that's getting higher. So, you know, that's not a great mix from a corporate point of view. So that's, you know, another reason to attach yourself to or, or take advantage of the fact that you've got this deposit with some scale and predictability, you know, right next door to you and, and build this kind of combined project and then take that because, you know, the sun metals exploration is super exciting, like 100 meters of 5.3. That's that's great stuff, but it's risky stuff. And so, you know, when you want to stabilize the company, you know, then you put the two together and then you you explore this high risk, high grade material. Um, from a point of lower risk from a corporate point of view. So you're not betting everything on every hole. Right. You are able to have something that Which keeps makes your answer valuation. make sense. It, it's, it's the sweetener, it's not the main deposit. Right, exactly. That, okay, that, that fits, I get it. Hmm. All right, well, um, so when is the resource update expected? Um, it'll be in the next few weeks. Next few weeks, okay, so this is timely. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing yeah. that. Um, and then you go straight from there to the PEA or more exploration. Or so what, we, what's the plan for this no, year? Our, so our um, our first bit of work, that, and I mentioned that we were going to be drilling this month. That drilling is as at Quinica. So and it's a mix of Quinica. So if you look at the Quinica deposit and you look at that, sec the section doesn't show it that well, but you can see it a little bit. That deposit was drilled out by Serengeti with a bunch of vertical holes, for the most part which is appropriate and spaced for a bulk mining operation. So what, what we're now contemplating is more selective mining that includes underground mining. In order to do that, we need to tighten up the drill spacing there. And we need to tighten it up, not just from a, a resource and, and mine planning point of view, but we also want to make sure we understand the distribution of the high grade properly so that we can make the most of it because there is some you know, real high grade there. Um, and we want to schedule it properly in this PEA and then presumably on the, on the PFS or whatever, you know, the subsequent studies are. So we're drilling a bunch of holes uh, in that uh, into Quinica um, and they're angle holes across the high grade. And they basically fill the gaps between where we have wide spaced vertical holes. And then we also have a decent number of targets, regional targets um, around Quinica. So we want to keep the drill going. Um, and we're going to um, test some of them because Serengeti did an incredible job of finding Quinica. They've done an incredible job of of, um, of identifying East Niv, you know, as a as a standalone brand new target. Um, but they weren't always that well funded through their history. So there's you know there's some targets that that they didn't have the the resources to test that that we want to go after. So you know anything that we find right around Quinica can add a huge amount of value to the to the mine plan. So we, we want to make sure we don't leave anything behind there. And so we'll be drilling, we'll be drilling at Quinica, basically probably through most of the rest of the year. Um, and then we'll have a new resource at Quinica, which will be a little bit tighter, I think, in terms of trying to make sure that we capture the, the right value for that PEA that comes out in, in 2022. So that will be at the end of the year. So we'll, we'll finish all that drilling this season and, and then put it into uh, something that will come out in Q4, um, and uh, and then we'll move over to uh, to East Niv in terms of of drilling. Or actually, we'll keep we'll keep have both going at the same time. But in terms of advancing those two projects, the real steps are first the metallurgy, which we put out a few weeks ago, 
The second is the Stardust resource, which is imminent. Um, and then the third thing is, uh, well, we've got the Kunika drilling, obviously, but then the Kunika updated resource. And then all those kind of building blocks go into the um, PEA. Right. That's yeah, really there's no sense in doing an economic study until you've done that drilling on Kunika, since it's going exactly. to be a combined project study. So I Correct. get that. Um, but I got to say, you know, it says in your presentation, we're a development story. How can you be a development story when you, you don't even have a PEA yet? You're not developing <laughs> anything. You're, st you're exploring it. Uh, that's a fair point. We could uh, we could think about the way we describe ourselves, but uh, yeah, I mean we're 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 on the we're on the cusp, but we're in the, the the you know the tipping point between exploration and and development, and you know we want to keep the exploration part of it uh, going as well. Sure. Okay, so I've got a clear picture of what you're doing at the main event there. Do uh, you want to quickly add a little bit more color on the other projects and what I mean? Is so, is it just East Niv, or are you going to also do anything with Lorraine Topcat or? So at Lorraine Topcat, we are not going to drill. So what we're doing there, I think, is actually has the potential to be really value enhancing, but I suspect it's not going to grab the market's attention this year. So they tech has tech spent a lot of money there, and they haven't done any work for for about twelve years there. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of mineralization there. So there's already you know multiple discoveries have been made, um, and but the tonnage is smaller than what probably tech would want to build for a standalone porphyry copper gold deposit. But that doesn't mean we can't, you know, if, if we could add 50 million tons of decent grade porphyry copper gold material that we could truck down to Quinica Stardust, that would be a home run for us. Like that would be so good for the project. We'd extend the mine life and, you know, that th those kind of um, opportunities um, uh, appear to abound at, at Lorraine. I mean, it's, it's, it's full of this mineralization that's, you know, a little bit chopped up. So we don't have, you know, a billion tons of, of something all sitting in one spot, but we've got a lot of um, really good um, uh, mineralization and, uh, and opportunities there to, to try and do something with that stuff. At East Niv, East Niv is a standalone. It's too far from Quinica Stardust to do anything with. Um, it's about it's about 50K south of Kamas. It's right off the, the kind of main road uh, infrastructure corridor and we have a big property position there that was staked by um, Serengeti. Targets worked up by Serengeti. We have a big magnetic anomaly there, donut magnetic anomaly that's you know like a textbook kind of porphyry signature. We've got a big chargeability anomaly there in the in the IP from the the IP work that Serengeti did there. And you know we have a program to drill our first our first round of drilling is about 2,700 meters into that thing. And we you know I think that. You know, if you had a target like that with just the geophysics, I think you'd want to drill it. We have a target that looks like that, undrilled, sitting in you know close to infrastructure in British Columbia, that also has outcropping uh, mineralization with you know porphyry alteration and grades of 0.35 uh, copper, 0.3 grams per ton gold sticking out of the ground. So kind of typical BC grades, um, again without a drill hole into it. So it's a big target. It's going to require a you know a reasonable amount of drilling to to wrap our heads around it, but it's you know in terms of a brand new opportunity for a for a discovery and you know something that would would make us have to think about how we're we're you know what we're doing with the company a great problem to have but um, you know we've got the opportunity to to make a, a significant new discovery in BC this summer. All right. So and twenty seven hundred meters it's it's enough to give a good initial poke without going broke. You know, spending the whole treasury on something yeah. unknown yet. Yeah. Uh, most of the money obviously goes into the main event. You've got twenty million in the bank. Uh, how much of that will go in the ground this year? Um, we'll probably spend ten to twelve this year. So and we'll end with probably a bit, uh, somewhat under eight million. All right. Yep. Okay. So. Not scraping the bottom of the barrel, but that that's a lot of money going into the ground. And we will see yep. in, in the deliverables are resource exploration and then ultimately another resource later and then preliminary economics later on, which would already be yep. paid for. So that's quite a few deliverables. Yep. I got it. Yeah. All right. Well, you've uh, you've painted a pretty clear picture of the story. I, I get it better now. And yeah, I guess I could I could say that I can see I can see the logic for the merger better now. It's too late for me to give it my blessing. You've already done it, <laughs> um, but it, it does make sense to me. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to give the combined company some some more thought here. Uh, but before I let you go, I always ask all our guests um, 
if you want me to put my hard-earned money into your stock, you know, how, how much of your own have you put in? How much skin in the game do you have, Peter? Uh, well, I, I own outright uh, 430,000 shares. And bought on the open market? Uh, I did not buy them on the open market, I, I, but I bought them before I joined. Um, they're not, um, you know, one cent founder type shares, but they were, um, yeah, I, I bought them before I, before I joined the company. So you feel incented to deliver for shareholders. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. You've been a good sport with some tough questions here. So I'll let you have the last word. Is there any final points given what we've discussed that you'd like to leave with the audience? Yeah, I, th I think um, what I what I think is is unique about the, about the company is again the ability. There, I don't think there are very many copper development stories where the the management gets to control and the and the shareholders ultimately are in control of their own destiny and where you end up with a project that you can actually you can sell, you can build, you can advance, and and I would argue that you know through that whole cycle. You know the ability to control our own destiny. We we deserve to trade at whatever whatever you think our valuation is. I think we should have a a multiple premium based on um, that control factor. So to me that that's kind of the the differentiating factor of of Northwest Copper is the the control part. All right. Well, that's a good last word. Well, uh, good luck with it. Keep us posted. Let us know how what you know what the truth machine turns up and uh, how it looks. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for watching this edition of In the Pit with Lobo Tigre. If you enjoyed or found value in what you just saw and you're watching this on any sort of social media, please do hit the like button and the share link. Send this on to anybody you think might be interested. That helps us out a lot. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit the subscribe button as well. The number of subscribers helps us get more valuable content to you as well. On the subject of subscribing, I'll quickly say that if you're not a subscriber to our free weekly Speculator's Digest, I encourage you to sign up. I promise if you do, we will not send you a flood of daily advertisements. You get one free weekly digest with original research not published anywhere else. Check it out at independentspeculator.com. Thank you and have a great day.